Welcome to The Cap, where we are here to speak with college reps and other professionals in the field of college admissions to help answer all your questions and guide you through every step of the process. So if you're serious about college admissions, you've come to the right place. Are you ready? Let's talk about it. And now, here's your host, Dr. John Durante. Welcome to The Cap, the College Admissions Process Podcast. I am your host, John Durante. And I am here to introduce you to college admissions representatives and other professionals in the field of college admissions. Our purpose is to serve you, the students and parents, so that you may gain insights straight from the people who ultimately make the decisions, regardless of whether you will apply to a particular school being highlighted in a given podcast episode You should listen to all of them, as each guest will give you tremendous insight and advice on every aspect of the college admissions process. Lastly, if you have any questions you'd like me to cover on future episodes or any comments you'd like to share, please email me at collegeadmissionstalk at gmail.com. And don't forget to visit our website at www.collegeadmissionstalk.com collegeadmissionstalk.com. So are you ready? Let's talk about it. Welcome to The Cap, everyone, the College Admissions Process Podcast. I am your host, John Durante, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you today Pam Pillow, who is the Executive Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Sacred Heart University. How are you today, Pam? I'm doing great, John. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you so much for being here. Truly looking forward to an awesome conversation. Why don't, we, why don't we start by just asking you to tell us about yourself. Tell us about your journey and how you ended up in this position. Wonderful. Happy to do so. Well, first and foremost, I'm a Sacred Heart University alum myself, actually a two-time alum. Uh, when I was a student here, I was a D1 tennis player, um, had a tremendous experience. My coach's wife was the former Dean of Admissions here at Sacred Heart University. So uh, along our travels and uh, competitions, she would sometimes come along with the team and stop off at some high schools and and prep schools and give some presentations about Sacred Heart. And of course, we would be there, uh, you know, to attest to the wonderful experience that we were all having. And I really just got a taste for what admissions work was like just through my interactions with her. Uh, and my coach as well. So uh, really developed a passion for it. Shortly after I graduated Sacred Heart, I joined the admissions team, actually the graduate admissions team. So I was working with many Sacred Heart students who wanted to continue their education here and pursue graduate school, but also um, external students or change of career folks who um, wanted to pursue a new role and receive some education uh, towards certification or uh, just to enhance their knowledge base. So I've been in admissions work for the last about 13 years. Um, In 2019, just before the pandemic, I switched over to this role uh, in undergraduate admissions. Um, I am truly enjoying uh, my interactions with more prospective families. In graduate work, you deal a lot with the students. I'm truly enjoying um, my work with all of the prospective families looking to make, you know, what is the largest transition Uh, in a student's lifetime. So I'm happy to help counsel them through and and tell them a little bit about the place that I love. That is terrific. Thank you so much for that introduction. Also, full disclosure, my youngest daughter, who is currently a freshman at Sacred Heart University, is having a phenomenal experience. And I, I feel like I need to share that my youngest daughter had a difficult time in high school. High school didn't come easy to her. She did have an IEP, and certainly I was doing a lot of research on my own and with her, trying to find the right fit. And although I didn't know about your Office of Accessibility, I have to tell you that it is second to none. They helped my little one with her transition to Sacred Heart. During the first semester, she met weekly with a counselor at the Office of Accessibility, and it just helped her with the transition to college, but also if she needed a tutor in any one of her classes, and there's different levels of tutors. There are professors, um, there are older students, there's different levels, and also if she needs extra time on a test, if she needs to use the recording software that Sacred Heart provides 
uh, students through the Office of Accessibility. All of that and a lot more have absolutely helped her make a tremendous transition to college. She had a very solid first semester and she's doing very strong in her second semester, not necessarily meeting with the person on a weekly basis because she feels that she doesn't need to, but it's truly a testament to all the great work you guys do in admissions, but also in terms of making sure that students are successful once they are on campus. So on a personal note, I really have to thank you and the Sacred Heart family. It's been tremendous. So having said all of that. Wonderful, thank you. Oh, thank you. So having said all of that, what is it about Sacred Heart University that is so appealing and makes students want to apply? Well, I think you touched on it a little bit there. Uh, we're a university that has grown over the last several years, certainly the last 10 years. We've grown in infrastructure and in facilities. Uh, come and visit and see our facilities. They're beautiful. Um, it's just a warm campus to be part of, an active campus. So we've We've grown to an undergraduate enrollment of about 6,000 students, and our graduate enrollment is another 3,000. So in total, you know, we're right at that 9,000 student mark. Uh, so with that comes a lot of opportunities on campus, a lot of different majors of study, research opportunities, facilities to enjoy, clubs, organizations to be part of. But I think through all that growth, we've maintained a little bit of a small campus feel in the sense that our class sizes are still small. We don't have any large lecture halls. Classes are just 22 students to a class. We have a lot of resources for students. You mentioned some accessibility services, tutoring services, but even more so than that, we have staff and faculty that sort of have an open door policy. So, you know, it's a very approachable, warm campus. I have to say we have a, a, a number of students from Long Island that are interested in Sacred Heart, and many of them say it's a perfect distance from home. You know, kind of feel like you get away from home, but not too far. You know, you could still get home if you need to um, in certain situations. So for all of those reasons, I think Sacred Heart is a, a special place, and I would love for you to consider us. Well, I appreciate that, and those are all the reasons why my daughter chose it. It's about an hour and a half away from home, so it's away, but she could come home for a good home-cooked meal any weekend if she chooses to. But she loves it so much that she doesn't really come home that often, so I'm happy about that as well that for does her. That happen. <laughs> exactly. So what is the average profile of the current freshman class in terms of their GPA and any other related materials that you collect, such as SAT or ACT scores? Sure, sure. Well, the incoming class of uh, 2025, so the students that we brought in just this past fall, um, they hail from 29 states, Puerto Rico, and 16 countries. Wow. So it's a, it's a diverse student body in terms of uh, where they're coming from, their lifetime experiences. Uh, they're bringing a lot of different interests to the classroom as well. Um, students have, on average, about a 3.6 GPA on a 4.0 scale. Um, and last year we were very proud to welcome over 630 students who were National Honor Society candidate, um, members in their high schools. So it was a very academically talented class. I know we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about this. We're test optional here at Sacred Heart University, so we don't require an SAT or an ACT unless students want us to consider those scores. So usually on average, the scores that we receive are somewhere around a 1230. But again, we, we're, we're a test optional school that we'll discuss a little bit more, I know, in this program. Absolutely, for sure. So what advice would you give a student if they fall lower than the current freshman average? We always talk about that middle 50%. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to that student that falls a little lower? What can they do to enhance their application? Well, first and foremost, apply. We always encourage <laughs> your application um, regardless. We look at a lot of factors as part of our admissions process. We call it a holistic review process. And you know, we're looking at grade trends. So maybe you started off in high school, it was a difficult transition, but then you sort of found your footing and there was an improvement in your grade trends. The pandemic has certainly entered in a lot of challenges, changes to remote learning, hybrid learning, different grading scales. We take all of that under review. It's a very thorough review process. Applicants, their files go through reviews and reads at least two times before a decision is made. So, you know, we take a very holistic approach. We encourage all candidates to apply. 
we really encourage you to connect with us in admissions as admission counselors. We can advocate for you, understand your background, counsel you through the process as well. So I really encourage everyone to schedule an interview with their admissions counselor, particularly if you're finding that you know, your profile might be a little bit out of, uh, out of our average profile. Connect with us. We want to talk with you and understand more about you and why you want to pursue a school like Sacred Heart. That's great advice. And so my next question will be, when they conduct the interview with you, what are you looking for? What advice can you give students in terms of their preparation for that conversation? Obviously, you want to be candid with us. And you, you, know, you want to be truthful about what you're looking for in an institution. We want to be sure that what we have to offer aligns with your goals, what you want to be involved in, the types of internships and, and careers that you might be interested in maybe majors of study that you're interested in. Come with questions. We love to ask questions of you to get to know you a little bit more, but it's important for candidates to ask their questions as well. You're interviewing us as much as we're interviewing you. So, you know, we really like to have a candid conversation and just hear all the things that you've been involved in and how you've evolved through high school. A really great point in terms of the fact that, of course, the college is evaluating the students, their applications, their essays. But it's really a two-way street where the student is also looking for the right fit for them because if all goes well, they're going to spend at least four years there. So you got it. You're right. They have to interview you as well and certainly visit campus and think of all of the things that we already spoke about in terms of do you want to be close to, do you want to be far away from home, how far away is just right for you. And what's exciting about it is it's, it's different for every student. Every student has a different feel in terms of what they're ready for or not. So it's an exciting process, and I thank you again for being here so that we could give more insight to students and their parents. Absolutely. If a student applies early decision, is there a better chance that they will be admitted? How does that work? No better chance of admission. Early decision is an option for a candidate where Sacred Heart or an institution is your very top choice. You want to go there no matter what. You want to learn of your decision sooner. Typically, early decisions are released before the holidays even, so you know very early on that you've been admitted and secured your seat in the class. It is a binding agreement, so uh, you know again, once you're offered a admission, you're, uh, you sign a contract where you have an understanding that you'll commit to that institution and attend. You know, early decision doesn't work for everyone. So there are a lot of options, non-binding options that are still extremely viable options. So it doesn't increase your chances for admission. It certainly is just a method in which, you know, you're letting a school know you are my top choice. I want to come to you pending my admission, but you are still subject to the admission standards for the institution. Appreciate the insight, of course. And earlier you mentioned the fact that Sacred Heart is indeed test optional, just like many other colleges and universities throughout the country. So my question is, if a student does not choose to submit their SAT or ACT scores, you know, with the application, how does that influence merit scholarships or financial aid overall? It does not at all at Sacred Heart. Our merit-based scholarships are solely based on GPA. So the test score or lack thereof has no bearing on any sort of financial aid at the institution or even consideration for our honors program. That is not at all based on uh, an SAT or an ACT score submission. Um, and that is deliberate. So, you know, no, no bearing. I would encourage students that if you have the ability to take the exam and you feel that it's a good representation of who you are academically and you'd like to submit that score to support your application file, submit it. Otherwise, it, it plays no role in our determination for you as a candidate for admission. Well, that's really good to know. Thank you so much for that information. And I'll ask a follow-up question that's related. Have you seen an overall shift with the recent adoption of the test optional policies that you and lots of other colleges and universities are adapting. How do you see this impacting the future of college admissions? Well, you know, internally here at Sacred Heart, we have been test optional for 10 years, believe it or not. We, um, this is not something new that we adopted through the pandemic. So uh, we've, you know, we've developed a very, as I mentioned, holistic 
um, review process where we really feel we get to know the candidates quite well. So you were ahead of the curve, right, Pam? <laughs> we sure were, yeah. We sure were. It, uh, you know, it, it, it certainly can paint a picture, you know, when, you, you know, you're applying to a school and, and, you know, it's another piece of you. But, you know, for candidates who don't test well, I'm one of them, to be perfectly honest. I, I through my, Me through too, my high Pam. school Me career, too. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, it, I was fine, but it, you know, it really wasn't a, a, a strong indicator of how I was as a student and my performance in, in the classroom. So, you know, for that reason, um, you know, I, I just see that our holistic process, I truthfully value an interview with a student much more strongly um, than, you know, what the score report says at the end of the day. I, I much rather get to know the student on an individual level and understand where their passions lie and, and know that, you know, they're going to work hard and have that grit and, and come to college um, and leave prepared for the workforce. That is so refreshing because we see so many students that stress out about the SAT, the ACT. Many times you see them stressing out over the AP exam, which doesn't even go on a transcript. So it really is a testament to the camaraderie, the family feel that Sacred Heart University offers. And I, I truly am so grateful for all of that. What are some examples of college essays that really stuck with you? In other words, when you read them, you thought, I really have to meet this candidate. Uh, that's a great question. Um, you know, I, I, I read a lot of essays. I'm sure you um, do. And I, and, I get, and I got a lot of questions about what should I write my essay about. So I always tell folks that try and write your essay. Your essay is the one piece of your application. We use, utilize the common application, and a lot of schools utilize the common application. So, you know, a lot of it is just prompts and answers to, you know, generated questions. So the essay is the one piece where you get to share something unique about yourself. And folks say, okay, well, what, what does that mean? You know, help, help guide me. Well, I can give you a perfect example of a, a recent essay I read. Um, this candidate applied, and her essay was about her next-door neighbor who was an elderly neighbor and had a dog. And at 12 years old, she noticed that the woman was kind of struggling to walk the dog constantly. So she offered to go over and walk her neighbor's dog for her at 12. And this continued as she went to high school, all the way through high school, you know, rainy days, snowy days after school, she would help her elderly neighbor walk her dog. And obviously the essay was very descriptive and it takes you right to the place where she's, you know, walking the dog, you know, in, through the neighborhood, um, which was wonderful. But the essence of it was something that I never would have known about this candidate unless I read this essay. Um, you know, it, te it tells a story about who this candidate is as a person, you know, um, under seeing that her neighbor was struggling to walk this dog, having the compassion, having the care, um, and also just the perseverance to stick with that and, you know, commit to what she had offered to walk her dog after school uh, every day. Um, really tells a lot about who the candidate is. So I, I share that just as, a, as an example of, you know, share something that's unique about you that kind of tells a story, tells us a little more about yourself um, as a former athlete, you know, experiences on the field, on the court, if you're into the arts, dance, you know, theater, um, those stories are wonderful. It just really tells us more about who you are, what drives you, um, and, you know, sort of your grit and perseverance because we all we all get through things in life and and we have to just sort of have that kind of go get it go get our spirit and and keep going so it sounds like you're really excited about the essay part of the application because that's really a place where a student could bring out his or her personality absolutely and so again going back to what we were saying before where people stress so much about the SAT or the ACT here's a school that truly looks at the holistic picture if you score well on those exams by all means submit them but it's not the only criteria there's multiple items that admissions people look at and it's important to understand that no one test whether it's an SAT an ACT an AP exam, no one test defines any one student. So again, I, I just love the approach that you take in terms of the entire process. So thank you for that. Absolutely.
another piece of the process are the teachers and their letters of recommendation. So in terms of teacher letters of uh, recommendation, what are you looking for to help get you a better picture in terms of who the candidate is? And again, are there any examples that you could share? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the letters of recommendation, again, they're, they're an opportunity for us to learn more about you. So if you have um, a teacher or a coach or a mentor who can really share a, you know, a, a side of you that may not be fully explained in other pieces of your application, I always encourage those letters of recommendation. And even though one is required at Sacred Heart, you can submit more. Um, you know, if you're pursuing programs of study um, that are in the nursing or health fields or engineering fields, you might want to be strategic about what, who's writing your letter of recommendation. Right. You know, do you have a letter right. of recommendation from a science teacher or a math teacher or someone who can attest to your proficiency in, the, in subject areas that are critical for those types of programs? Um, you know, but again, overall, you know, it, it's nice to read the stories where there's improvement along the way. We all have um, strengths and weaknesses, and that's okay. Um, you know, the letters of recommendation don't always have to showcase that you were great the whole time. You know, it, it could be that you had to work hard through a particular topic or subject area, um, and that you did. And, and in the end, you know, you were, you were successful. So, um, you know, those are all things to keep in mind as you're selecting who will write your letters of recommendation. Great advice. And, you know, again, it goes to the fact that there can be a dip, but what happened when you had that dip in grades, for example? Did you overcome? Did you persevere? Those are great stories that can be shared. So absolutely appreciate that feedback. How often should a student visit the campus and do you keep track of such items to determine demonstrated interest, for example? I was just going to say that it, that is the demonstrated interest, um, <laughs> and yes, we do keep track. Um, now, it's a matter of how many times you need to visit. Um, y you know, it's not that you have to go driving back and forth every month or, or, or uh, you know, even slightly less frequently than that. But what I do recommend is I do recommend you visit. Um, I do recommend you go on a tour. But I also recommend that you, you come back for something else. You know, maybe it's to learn more about um, an involvement activity on campus or a little bit more about a particular program of study that you're most interested in. Make sure you're connecting with both students, f uh, faculty as well, even some of the administrators. The way um, that administrators engage in different events tells a lot about the institution and whether or not they'll be engaged throughout the student's time at, at, at the institution. And I know here at Sacred Heart, we, you know, we, we really take a very hands-on approach. And I have never had any difficulty with uh, having any faculty representation or involvement representation at our admissions events. And we're all very busy folks, and we all have our own jobs to do. But um, interacting with prospective students and families is something that's always been a top priority for others around the university here, which is, makes me very proud to work in the capacity that I do. Um, but I, now, you know, through the pandemic, virtual options have been great opportunities as well. So don't always feel like you have to get in the car and, and make, a, make a trip, especially if it's maybe a little bit of a further distance away. Um, virtual opportunities allow you to engage with a lot of folks at the institution sometimes even more when, you know, than when you would have an on-campus visit. So, um, you know, take advantage of virtual opportunities as well. Um, so, yes, the visit is a critical piece. We do track it. Um, not to say, you ha like I said, you have to visit, you know, 10 times, but, um, <laughs> you know, certainly make sure, make sure you're getting uh, some experiences and visit opportunities around the areas that are of most interest to you. I was curious if you have any advice for student athletes, people aspiring to play at the collegiate level. Obviously, they still have to apply, but what advice could you give students that, you know, are hoping to play at Sacred Heart University? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're a Division One school. Um, it, you know, certainly, I had a tremendous experience as a student athlete here. We have a number of student athletes. We have thirty-three Division One sports here. Wow. So. Um, my recommendation would be starting junior year, um, you know, due to some NCAA regulations, yes. you can certainly start to make out, make some outreach to our, to our coaching staff. 
Um, particularly on our, our varsity website, there are recruiting forms. So um, there are forms by sport that uh, ask certain questions to allow the coaches to get an understanding of your experience and abilities. Put together a tape, um, you know, put, put together some sort of CV of your, of your uh, accomplishments. And, um, you know, re outreach, outreach to the coaches. Um, and even if you have the opportunity to outreach and mention your interest to admission staff, do that as well. Um, and, you know, start early in the process. That is great advice. And Pam, by the way, if you have any links that you want to share in the show notes, I'm happy to provide them to all the students and their parents. I think that would be very helpful. Oh, Thank wonderful. you so much for that. Great. I was also curious, I know that you're test optional. However, how do you evaluate, do you evaluate varying state assessments? For example, New York State has regents exams for all students in their state. Um, your school is obviously in Connecticut, outside of New York. So how much weight do you put on these types of assessments, if any at all? Yeah, we don't put weight on them. Um, I, I can tell you that if a student, if we see a letter grade that um, is concerning, we'll sometimes look to the region score to see if, if, you know, they did very well on the region's exam. Um, sometimes that is like, well, they, you know, achieve the competencies needed to be successful on that exam. Um, I guess I would simply say that the exam is, will never be a negative, you know. It will only be uh, an opportunity for us to sort of piece together uh, progress and, and um, making sure that the appropriate skills were achieved throughout the process. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that insight. And lastly, I'll ask you, what are the three main pieces of advice you would offer prospective students and their parents, of course, who are preparing for the admissions process? Awesome. Okay. Pieces of advice. Well, we just talked about one. I do absolutely encourage your visit. You know, you get in the car, you drive here, you get to get a feel for the distance from home, get to get a feel for the surrounding community, and then certainly most importantly, the campus as well. And just how you feel when you come on campus, what you witness in terms of the facilities and the interaction with the staff, students, faculty that, that you engage with during your time. The next piece of advice that I would give is connect with admissions you know, connect with your admissions counselor, schedule an interview, keep in touch with them. Don't be shy about asking questions. This is our job. <laughs> you know, sometimes parents will call and say, gee, I'm so sorry I'm calling you with this question. Please don't ever be sorry that you're calling me with a question. Um, <laughs> that's, really, that's really what we love to, in this job. We love to, and if we don't have the answer to the question, we will get the answer uh, from the appropriate party. So, just remain engaged with your admissions counselor and, and your admissions staff. And then, you know, we also discussed my third piece of advice during this podcast, and, and that is to take time and develop your essay. Develop a thoughtful essay, take time with it, read it, get it proofread. And, you know, that is a critical piece of the application. So I always recommend that students, you know, don't just rush through that and put something down on paper just to get, get that through and get that as a check mark complete. You know, it is a critical piece that allows us to really understand, you know, who you are and what drives you. That is great advice. And in terms of the essay, I think it's really important for a student after they finish their essay to leave it and go back to it and leave it again and go back to it and ask the question, is the admissions counselor going to learn something new about me that's not on my activity sheet, that's not elsewhere in my application? And if the answer is yes, there's new information about you, whether it's your personality or whatever your passions are, then it's a good essay. That's and if right. not, if not, keep working at it. You got and I it. Also love, and I also love the fact that you talk about how accessible you are and no one has to apologize if they have questions. That's what you're there for. And that's really the point of this podcast as well. It's really to shed light on the fact that you, your team are extremely accessible. You're there, you wanna help. And we're trying to give insight into a complicated process, but hopefully we're working together mm -hmm. to make it a little less complicated. So I sure hope so. Pam, I can't thank you enough. You were awesome. And I'm just so grateful oh. because I know that this is going to help many students and their families. Thank you so much. John, thank you. My pleasure. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Cap, the College Admissions Process Podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, please don't forget to tell a friend and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and wherever you listen to your podcasts. I am your host, John Durante, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of The Cap.